out at Vail Pass checking out a board from a relatively new brand called Season Equipment. Season was founded by Austin Smith and Eric Pollard, and the idea is to create snowboards and skis with a simplistic design focused on shape and designed to be functional to last for multiple seasons. So that's where the name comes from. These boards don't change season after season. The graphic's not gonna change. So a pretty cool brand story there. And today I'm stoked to check out the Season Nexus. Today the plan is to try to get some laps out here at Vail Pass and see if we can find some soft snow. Then head off to Copper to hit some groomers, hit some park laps. And I'm gonna go through all the tech and give you some feedback on how this thing feels out on snow as well. Let's check it out. All right, for reference, before we get into the tech, I'm five foot 10, I weigh around 150 pounds, and we're riding the Nexus 155. One of the first things you're gonna notice about this snowboard is that it's very lightweight. It's always nice to see that, help to make the board a little bit more maneuverable, a little bit easier to whip around out there. It also has super simplistic graphics. So we got a nice matte black kind of textured top sheet, a black base, and really the only colors you're gonna find on this snowboard is some accents on the top sheet, base, and sidewall with very minimal branding. So super simplistic design, kind of taking notes from brands like Gentemstick and Karua. And the Nexus is gonna be an all mountain focused board on the season lineup. It is a directional shape, so it has an overall directional outline. You're gonna find a longer nose than tail outside the front contact points, helping to give the board more surface area up front to help keep that nose up, as well as a six millimeter taper, so that tail is slightly narrower than the nose, helping reduce the surface area in the tail, again, helping keep that nose up in soft snow, plus a 20 millimeter setback. So the bindings are shifted 20 millimeters closer to the tail, naturally keeping your weight further back on the snowboard, helping to eliminate that rear leg fatigue you can sometimes get on those deeper days. This is a camber dominant snowboard and it's gonna come through with that more energetic, snappy, poppy feel you'd expect out of positive camber. It does have a slight bit of rocker in the nose and tail to help mellow things out, help with turn initiation and make it a little less catchy, but overall gonna have that more powerful camber feel to it. You're also gonna get what Season calls their 360 degree double damping sidewalls, which is a full wrap ABS sidewall. It does have some dampening properties to help mellow out vibrations you're out there exploring, going through some more variable conditions, as well as a centered base, which is known to be a harder, faster, more durable base material compared to an extruded base. You do wanna make sure to wax this board regularly to maintain a nice, consistent, fast glide out there, but always nice to see a centered base in the construction. And the last thing I want to call out, and this is going to go for the entire season lineup, is that the boards are gender neutral. So they don't make a men's and women's specific model. They just focus on the shape and they offer the boards in a huge variety of sizes. So you can find the Nexus anywhere from a 143 up to a 164. Uh, I think they got pretty much everyone covered in that size range. So definitely cool to see that. And I think that's going to be it for a quick tech breakdown out here. We're gonna get these laps going, see if we can find out here at Vail Pass, and we'll check back in later in the day to give you some feedback how it feels out on snow. All right, spent all day out there testing the Nexus. I think I got a really good feel for it. We found some nice soft snow at the pass. Copper was running perfect, had some great groomers, and the park was dialed as always. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is that you are gonna find a metal skid plate right at the tip of the tail. So in the springtime, when some rocks are exposed, you might be able to get some sparks going, uh, but the main thing gonna help add some durability to this snowboard in the tail. And uh, let's start off talking about powder performance. Uh, so out on the pass today, it was a little bit variable, probably like six to eight inches of powder, a little bit lighter up top with some crusty sections, a little bit lower, some sun-baked kind of sections. Uh, so pretty good powder test, got like five laps out there. And I gotta say, this thing did really, really well. It's not a board that I would hesitate to take out on a deep day. Uh, they make it super obvious to uh, set up your stance how you want. There's some good markings on the insert pack. So I actually set up the stance about half a centimeter forward from reference stance. But like I mentioned before, you are gonna get a two centimeter setback as well as that six millimeter taper. But I think the thing 
that stood out the most to me riding this board in powder uh, was actually a combination of those directional features plus this shallow planing nose. You got that kind of elongated nose outside those front contact points. And it's not an abrupt curve. It kind of gently rises as you go out to the tip there. And it's also softer in the tips. So I found that I was able to really trust the board in that snow, even go a little front foot heavy. And when I would do that, the nose would actually bend and uh, stay directing the board up on top of the powder. So really good feel for it out there. Did great in the conditions we had today and not something that I would worry about if you did take it out on like a proper pow day, like 10, 12 inches plus. I think it's gonna do just fine. As far as the flex goes, Season claims it's right around a mid flex. It gets a little bit softer in the tips. And I'd say that it's just a little on the softer side of medium. It does have a fairly playful feel to it overall and it does get softer in the tips. So uh, that was a lot of fun for butters. It's not gonna make you work too hard to get into taller presses, to get those more stylish looking butter tricks going. You do have a larger platform with the long nose to lean into, so you can get more leverage for nose presses, uh, but still not too difficult to get into a tail press and get some flex and energy out of the tail as well. I also found that positive camber came through when it came to energy and pop. Definitely not the most energetic snowboard out there, uh, but considering there's no carbon built into it, and it does have that more playful flex. It's got plenty of energy. It's got good pop. It's not going to hold you back out there. Uh, if you know, you're trying to get in the air off a roller, you're hitting park features. It's not something that's going to be on your mind. It's just going to have a nice, comfortable and natural feel to it. And even though the Nexus is a more directional shape, it had a surprisingly comfortable feel for park laps. I think the biggest part of that is the flex in the snowboard. Um, it just has that comfortable, somewhat playful feel, really good on a variety of features, whether you're trying to hit uh, smaller rails, stepping up to more medium features. I even hit some pretty large jumps on it and it felt really good. Uh, the one thing I would watch out for though, and this goes for butters and flat ground tricks as well, is that longer nose. So you can catch that nose on a rail or on a roller if you're not being careful. Um, something to get used to if you're taking directional shapes into the park. But overall, super comfortable feel. The setback and the taper didn't really bother me out there either. I did several tricks where I landed switch and it's not that typical feeling you get uh, with a tapered directional board where it kind of swoops you into a tighter turn when you're going switch. It felt very comfortable and wasn't something that I even felt like I had to compensate for on those park laps. If you are out there, you're trying to hit some jumps, trying to hit some rails, you know, in between tree runs or whatever it is you're doing out there that day, uh, the Nexus is gonna come through and have a solid feel for that as well. And the last thing I wanna talk about is the carving experience. Two specs worth bringing up is the waist width. So you're gonna find a 258 millimeter waist on this snowboard, starting to get a little above average. And not only is that gonna add more surface area overall to help give this board better float, but it's gonna allow you to get more aggressive edge angles for carving and trying those more Euro carve style turns, especially if you're in a smaller to kind of average boot size, but gonna be a nice benefit overall if you do run a larger boot size. So always nice to see that. You're also gonna find a 7.6 meter side cut radius, which is a pretty average side cut for this size snowboard. Gonna feel comfortable at a wide variety of speeds, whether you're cruising slower down a mellower pitch, going more moderate speeds, or trying to hit some steeper runs going a little bit faster. It's gonna feel natural, not gonna buck you in any crazy turns or anything like that. I will say though that this isn't like a full on high speed charging kind of snowboard. As you do get up to those higher speeds, you might find a little bit of chatter in this nose. Uh, I didn't have any problems with it out there today. I think it felt solid in control the whole time. Even with a little bit of chatter, I didn't feel like I was gonna lose my edge or anything like that. Uh, so not something I would worry about, but uh, with that more playful flex, you know, that is something that I think is worth bringing up. But overall, this board is super fun for carving and something I think you're really gonna enjoy out there on the groomers or just exploring the mountain in general. Overall, I think the Nexus is gonna be a great choice as that one board, do it all type of solution. Whether you're out there exploring the mountain, getting in the trees, trying to find powder stashes, or even taking park laps. It does fall a little on the more playful side of the spectrum. So I think it's gonna be friendly for more intermediate riders, gonna be great for progression as you're trying to figure out what you wanna do with your snowboarding. And also gonna be a really fun choice for you more experienced riders that want something that just has a comfortable, natural feel to it. Nothing too aggressive or too crazy, but gonna be capable 
wherever you take it, whether that's in some deeper snow or hitting some park laps. So, so if that sounds like something you're interested in and you wanna read a little bit more about this snowboard, I'll have it linked down in the description below for you to check out. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments for me. Or if you've had a chance to ride this board, it'd be great to get some feedback from you as well down in the comments. Drop a like if you got some value. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I appreciate all you guys. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you in a new video next time. Take care, guys.